Hi everyone! Welcome to a practical chess position. This time from the book by Jacob Agard, Excelling at Positional Chess. We've done a bunch of puzzles from this book and we're doing it again. So what the heck is the idea here? Well, if we move our queen, he takes our rook. If we move it somewhere where he can do that. So first we have to find a move that makes any sense at all, which is not not super easy. I mean, rook e1 and queen e8 looks pretty, pretty natural. Uh, let's find other possibilities here. Bishop to d7 also is is a reasonable looking move. Let's just look at all of our candidates. I, I'm, I'm running out of actual candidates other than this. I don't. I don't see many moves other than bishop d7 or rook e1 followed by queen e8. I, and and that one looks more appealing to me. Hmm. There's some development problems we have there, though. Some pretty serious ones. Uh, let, let's demonstrate. So, let's say we do this. Queen e8. What if he takes and goes bishop to b6? How do we develop this bishop? And if we can't develop this bishop, like, what are we going to do? I mean, g6, g4, for example. And so, I'm just kind of concerned. We can never really move the... The king's hard to extricate. I mean, I guess, maybe, we, we can go bishop a4 here also, which is like forcing, I think, rook to f8 or something. I don't know, man. Just, just seems like kind of shady. I mean, yeah, you can bring his king in, but he's totally locked in. His pieces can't get out. So, for that reason, I'm kind of leaning towards the simple, not very flashy, but just bishop to d7. And then if queen f7... Probably we have a move like queen a a five threatening threatening queen um, queen to e one mate or uh, maybe we even have something else I don't know maybe I like to find two different moves <laughs> just in case I mean queen a five looks okay I mean it's risky it's definitely risky but it looks okay. So, I mean, like, if c3, then we can move the bishop. So, bishop c6 or something. Oh, maybe this is annoying, but rook takes. Or queen b6 check, actually. So, my gut feeling is that we don't want to go rook e1 because that endgame is really ugly. This way, we at least develop our piece. And we just try to, like, slowly extricate ourselves. We have an idea of rook e5 next move. Which is certainly worth examining. So, I mean, I guess I'm going to go with that. Yeah, I'll go with bishop d7. Let's see what the book says. I mean, I should look at it a little more, but that, that queen trade position looks ugly, man. I just don't like that we can't move anything. So, 60. Not too many choices here, but it's still very important to be exact. This is a simple position where black has only two moves that do not lose on the spot. It is a matter of simple calculation. Bishop d7, exclamation point! Cool. Okay, so basically everything I said was right. Bishop d7, a queen f7, queen a5. And the problem is if this move, queen takes, rook takes, bishop b6, so I got it exactly right. Basically everything I, I said was correct. <coughs> and this position is extremely ugly for black. So way to go, me. Good, good job at analyzing, Greg. <laughs> And I hope some of you guys solve this one. This is actually, these types of positions are tough for computers too because that kind of position here is not super good at evaluating it because the point is the bishop will never get out, but it's hard to see, like, it's hard to kind of uh, calculate it. It's, computers aren't good with trapped pieces, basically, where a piece can't move, but it can't move for like a long time. It kind of has trouble with like the horizon effect or something. But basically, yeah, you, you don't want to do this because of this end game, whereas on on bishop to d7, we have this move. Yippee! So thanks guys for watching, and I will see you tomorrow with another practical chess position. Bye-bye.